Mr. Rob. Yep. Were we supposed to um, start with the stocks thing yesterday for homework? Yes. Okay. It's not due till tonight, but um, if you don't have it done, then you need to like retroactively look up yesterday's stock market values at opening, which is easy to do if you just Google it. Yeah. And then you'll have to update your stock values for today because when I grade it for the final project grade, I'm going to make sure that everybody has entries from the 14th until it's due. And these are for the ones that we choose only, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's millions of, of different stocks available. Yes, it's only for the ones that you choose. Yeah, Mr. Rob. Yep. Uh, how did you do it? Where you do the duplicate um, uh, pages again? Oh, that's a good question. I'm literally about to walk everybody through that so that y'all, because we're gonna do this every. This is gonna be in the warm up every day for like the until the year ends. Mm -hmm. Um, it, yeah, I'll do that right now, and you'll get used to it because we'll be doing it every day. Okay, because like I have my thing set up. I just have it on one sheet. I don't know how to like. Add yeah, that. yeah, I got you. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah, okay. Um, and so what we're going to do to update our stock values is we're going to head to our Excel sheet. And I'm going to continue along with mine as an example. Um, Okay, so here's the one that I set up with my little um, investments. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, down here at the bottom, I'm gonna hit duplicate. And you'll notice that off to the right, right here, it makes a thing that just says copy of 417. I'm gonna right click that again, cause that's the copy that it made and I'm gonna rename it. <laughs> Uh, to four. Oh, I got the dates wrong yesterday. Yesterday wasn't the 17th. It was the 14th. So today is 415. Yesterday was 414. Wait, how'd you go to duplicate again? Uh, bottom of the screen shows where all your individual sheets are down here. Right click it and then click duplicate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Rob, yep. I'm doing it on um, the Google uh, Sheets. On the I, bottom, so am I. I. Just, uh, this is Google Sheets. Mine looks different on the bottom. N no. Yeah, I just have the plus and like the four lines, and then it says sheet one. And then yeah, I don't have any because of other things. It says sheet one, and then you right click where it says sheet one, and it gives you all these other options. <laughs> Um, okay, so now that I have duplicated my sheet from yesterday, this is 414, this is 415 now, I want everybody to now delete the cash on hand part, just because, um, you know, that's not going to change. So your cash on hand is always going to be on this first page here. And then you need to go through and update your um, stock values, right? Uh, so I'll have to pull up all of these values for today which I'm just going to do on a different screen so that I don't have to go back and forth. Mr. So, Rob? Yep. How will we check a stock? Like, let's say we miss a day. What do we type in to, like, to find it? Oh, uh, literally the name of the stock um, along with the uh, date will do it. Or if you go directly to NASDAQ.com, um, you can look at the... Uh, value of any given stock on any given day. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So Amazon, NASDAQ, right? So if I go there, uh, the first link will be the official nasdaq.com website. And then on this page, it'll show you the changes in Amazon stock value over basically any period of time that you're interested in. Um, it's taking forever to load on my screen, but yeah, so it'll tell you like the price fluctuations at, that it had over the day, or if you switch this back to five day, it'll show you, uh, what the price was yesterday at the open of the market. And when in doubt, I mean, we're actually using like, it's 9am when we have class. So that means it's, uh, 10, 11, it's noon on the East coast. If you ever miss a day and you go back though, just take the price at the open of the market. Okay. Uh, good question. 
So yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to go here to my 415 sheet and I'm going to update my stock prices for the day using current values. What was the question? There's a question out there? No? Um, when we change the value, doesn't our total investment also go up, which is like, is that how we just like know how much money we have? Yes, this is how stocks work. So whatever amount of money you invested yesterday, which I'm going through and updating mine right now. So Amazon is worth a little bit more, but Tesla is worth a little bit less. Uh, that is saying that like, we'll talk about interpretations in a second. Let me update my four stock prices. <clears throat> And my last stock is Sony, 163. Okay, so uh, that means that yesterday, right, when I purchased in my example, I spent uh, $9,995.91. Uh, now I have $9,977.63. So um, it automatically calculates the total investment. And on our first sheet, we have the cash on hand just so that we know how much cash we have left over after investing the $10,000. So for each day, we're gonna take the previous day's total investment and we're gonna retype that over here uh, near our um, current total investment. So yesterday's value. Uh, which was 9995.91. Yeah. And guess what I'm going to add over here, and this will get carried forward through all of our other sheets. Anybody gonna take a guess what I'm gonna type in here? Money gained or loss. There we go. Daily change. So this is going to be equal to yesterday's value minus today's value. Hit enter. Uh, and oh, look, I have, oh, I'm sorry. We actually want equal to yesterday's value minus today's value. Wait, no, no, no. I had it right the first time. This should be equal to today's value minus yesterday's value. There we go, yeah. So since yesterday, this set of investments I've made has lost $18.28. Mm. Now, um, are there any questions on what I've done in my Excel sheet so far? Everybody figured no, but... out how to clone the sheet. Everybody's going through and updating their stock values and then getting a way to calculate their daily change. Mr. Rob, I got two questions. Yeah. So um, I copied my sheet. So just to make sure on the bottom, after you duplicate it, it says sheet one and two, right? And then like in one, and then right next to it, then it says sheet one alone, right? Yep. Okay, cool. And then um, to yeah, do and then the- be sure, Hold on, re, be sure to rename the sheets with, um, be sure to rename the sheets with dates. Oh, okay, with dates. So my, my sheets are 414 and 415. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And then what's the second question? Second question is, um, if your cash on hand is like negative after putting in, like it, it can't be. After, after. No, your, your cash on hand can't be negative. That's why you only have cash on hand on the first day, because this is saying how much cash you have left over after investing your initial $10,000. But as we carry it forward for all the other sheets, it doesn't make sense to use that cash on hand calculation. So for the future sheets, just delete it. So should I just get rid of cash on hand right now? Get rid of cash on hand on every sheet that isn't 414. That's the only sheet that will have uh, cash on hand. Oh, okay. Um, Sir, yep. uh, how did you say to find the stock value for a previous day that you forgot? Go to nasdaq.com and then type in the name of the stock if it's a nasdaq stock and it'll show you a like uh, graph over time of the stock value just set it to five day and then look at the price from yesterday 
Is it wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> Does it matter if we take the stock value like early in the morning? Like I did this like this morning before class, like today's. Mm-hmm. And my Amazon's different from what it is right now. Do I put the new one or should I just do what it was in the morning? It literally changes by the minute. Um, when we update it daily, just take what it is while we're in class. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, now that we have our first day of updates, and like I said, we're going to be doing this like same update every day, let's go ahead and build in one more um, metric so that we can think about these investments a little bit more intelligently. So yesterday, according to my like little set of investments here, right, uh, I invested ten thousand ish dollars, and today I um, today I'm looking at my total stock value, and I've lost eighteen dollars. What do y'all think? How should we think about this? How should we feel about this? It sucks. Does it? Mm-hmm. Does if it, it keeps sucks? going down. Um, will it, and uh, does that take place within some larger context? It depends on the companies you've invested in and what they have long-term and how they're going to go. So that's one good thing to think about is to consider, like, what are these companies doing long-term? Because if they mostly have an upwards, like, positive derivative trajectory, right, then maybe some slight dip in the meantime isn't that big of a deal. Uh, But it's not just what these individual companies are doing long-term. There's another context in which you have to think about these types of investments. What's another larger context you can place all of this in? Is it the coronavirus right now? Like stocks could go up or down after? Uh, it is It is a fundamental collapse of the market due to the coronavirus. Um, everything is in free fall. Every single stock value is dropping, which is why if we were doing this in normal circumstances, I would like give an automatic A to the person whose portfolio made the most money. And at this point, I think I'm just going to give an A to the person who loses the least money. Because I basically guarantee that no matter what stocks you pick, by the time we come out on the other side of this project, basically everybody will have lost money, which is why it's important to keep in mind the fact that when you make these types of investments, you're not looking at short-term gains, right? Like that's what you're doing if you're day trading and you're like, hey, I have some news that this stock is going to go up in a few hours, so I'll buy it now, I'll wait a few hours, and then I'll sell it. That's usually an unhealthy way to think about investments unless you are extremely lucky. And so the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to also add in a percent change. So percent change. So the percent change is going to be equal to our daily change, then divided by our total investment amount for that day. Then we're going to multiply it by 100. I'm sorry, this has to be in parentheses. And then after we put this ratio in parentheses, we'll multiply by 100. And multiplying it by 100 just turns it into a percent, which is to say that based on these changes, right, uh, my stocks have gone down 0.18% since yesterday. The overall market went down about 1% yesterday. So the fact that my set of investments has decreased at a slower rate than the market in total itself is a small success. Mr. Rob, can you show yeah. the equation again for Gladly. how to get? Yep. So this is equal to, and it's up here. It's equal to our daily change divided by our total investment because that's giving us basically our change as a decimal, then multiplied by 100. So it takes our change and turns it into a percentage, the same way that we do when we do error analysis in AP Physics. So it's not just like, oh no, I lost 20 bucks, I should sell everything. Uh Uh-uh, don't think about it that way. The thought is, if we hang in long enough, and long enough might be years, it might be like, hey, we're actually gonna wait for the market to bottom out after all this bad coronavirus stuff happens, purchase up a bunch of stocks for cheap, and then as they recover, you have the opportunity to make some money. You know what I'm saying? Um, Small fluctuations, a little bit of up and a little bit of down, 
shouldn't cause you to panic. Uh, is this okay? Is this cool? Are there any questions on this part of the warm up? And like I said, we'll be doing this every day. Okay. Mr. Rob, I got a question actually, real yep. quick. Yeah. So um, if my daily change from yesterday to today was $294, that means that I made like 294 bucks, right? As long as when you did this, you did um, today's value minus mm -hmm. yesterday's value, not the other way around. Yeah, 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 that's what I did. So your money's up above $10,000? Yeah. Hey, congratulations. You have made a slight amount of money. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well done. Okay. Um, so let me go back to my uh, original. Let me go back to my whiteboard real quick. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that every day. And like I said, a big part of it that you want to take away is also how Excel works because we're going to make that sheet more and more complicated as we go along. And in the end, we're going to use those different cells from all of those different sheets in order to make a graph over time that'll display how your stock values did. Uh, item number two, I want to remind you all about the importance of typing speed. So if you haven't been using Type Racer, please do that. Um, mostly because the AP tests are about a month away and you will be typing up a bunch of them. So, you know, if you can type 100 words per minute, that will give you a much better position to write intelligent things into those AP tests. And it's also just a useful like life skill. So if you haven't been working on your typing speed, please do. And does anybody want to share any interesting stocks that they came across yesterday that they want to talk about? Did anybody find any cool ones? Because I was already looking at your guys' assignments, the ones that got turned in, and I saw some interesting stuff. No? Okay. Um, so, here is what I would like to talk about today, and today we'll do our second day of uh, discussing stocks and those types of investments. Um, let me go ahead and start off the resuming of these notes by saying that uh, day trading is gambling. Um, when it comes to uh, investing, those other types of investments that I talked about, the, the safe ones, are typically safe ones. So that would be things like investing in bonds, putting stuff into your retirement account, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to keep in mind that this type of investing, stocks and stock options, is straight up gambling and carries with it all of the standard risks of gambling. Uh, now, there's always like the part where I could tell you, hey, don't, oops. I could say, hey, don't do it, right? But you know, that's the number one way to get a person to do a thing is to tell them not to do it. Let me just show you this. <clears throat> this is not my portfolio. Could somebody interpret this for me? Look at the date. Wait. The yeah. second one doesn't show the date. The second one doesn't show the date. That's today. Well, that's How just because of the corona. Oh, it's not just that. This person also made some really bad decisions. Um, this is both, don't get me wrong, like the decrease over the last few months is a probably a lot of coronavirus stuff, but this person made some just poor investing choices. Yo, this person put in $120,000 and that investment set is now down to below $6,000. This person lost more than $100,000 in the market on bad investments. Wait, but you know how you're saying it's gambling day trading? Yeah. Um, when you're like using Robinhood with the low amount of money, isn't it way easier to make money off day trading? Easier? Why would it be easier? I don't know. I found it to be way easier by just selling every other day or two days. Um, I mean, if you get a gain and you sell it off immediately then you, you do cash out that increase but it's still 
gambling because when you gamble in a casino, you could pull a slot on a slot machine, win a hundred dollars, and then walk away. But people yeah, but, don't normally walk away. Well, yeah, but you're seeing like a moderate increase, and you have a graph showing. I mean, the general direction on like a slot machine. Um, the graph when it comes to a slot machine is the contents of your wallet of whether or not you have more cash in it or less cash in it from when you started. There is, I don't think there is any breakdown in saying that investing in the stock market in this way is it's gambling. Like just because it, we tie a graph to it doesn't mean it's not gambling. But then what makes the time the difference between gambling since they we're talking about day trading you're saying that's gambling versus uh, like a long-term investment oh that's that's a good okay now i understand the question um the difference is insurance so it's the simple fact that um even though those other types of investments that we talked about like when you invest in a 401k that money is in the stock market um technically like usually the way that those types of investment packages are built is that they're run by some major corporation and that portfolio is grouped into a big chunk of other retirement accounts. The money in those retirement accounts is invested all over the stock market, like basically in everything that they can purchase, they make it as diverse as possible so that the overall movement of that retirement account is just gonna be the same as the overall stock market in general. So even if you have a few failed stocks in there, it's not going to matter because so long as the stock market keeps growing over time, the value of those retirement accounts is going to keep growing over time as well. In a lot of cases, those types of safe investments are not gambling simply because if something bad were to happen to all of that money, that money is actually usually insured by the federal government, like by the FDIC. So if something were to happen to that type of investment, you don't lose your money unlike this homie who invested $120,000 and there is no insurance at all to make up for their losses. It's literally just gone. Well, how do you know you get back? Because in 2008, they didn't, like, basically everyone lose their 401k? Um, it is possible to lose your 401k if the company that holds it goes out of business and goes under. So those types of things are safer, but there is no such thing as a completely safe investment. I mean, there's also always the chance that you know, society just fundamentally collapses and then money means nothing anyway. Like there is always an additional bottom that could fall out. But so long as we're talking about like, hey, what's possible with investing, then we have to stick to the confines of what's possible by investing. But then again, 401k or like those investments are over like, what, 30 years, 40 years? Yeah, those are those are the time scales over which you... Um, that is the timescales over which those investments are wise because over timescales that long, uh, 20, 30, 40 years, you have the ability to double, triple, quadruple your money. If you start investing in your retirement account when you're already in your 50s or your late 50s, it won't even double your money. And I, I don't think it is wise to do that, um, which is why like, if you are gonna put money into a 401k, do it when you're young, not when you're old. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, number one, uh, yo, this kind of, of trading in the stock market is uh, straight up gambling. So just, you know, keep that in mind that this thing that I am telling you about is a form of gambling. It just is a thing that people with money do in order to generate more money. And if you have money on which money can be made, it, it's kind of irresponsible to not use it to grow money. Uh, Consider the risks, consider what you can put out there. And same as gambling, don't do it with money that you can't spare. Like the, the dumbest possible thing one could do would be like, well, I have a thousand bucks and I could pay rent or I could put it in the stock market, double my money and then pay rent. Like, no, because you could also lose it and get evicted because you can't pay your rent. This is a thing to do with additional income, not with your base income. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about what affects stock values. Um, Mr. Rob, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure that I get the percent change formula right, can I? Is it just daily change uh, divided by total investment times a hundred? Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what affects stock value? 
what are some things that y'all know about that will affect the value of these stocks? What's going on in the world? Uh, so yeah, and that's a really hard thing to latch onto because what's going on in the world is not one set of facts. Like there's so much stuff going on in the world that it would actually be impossible to encapsulate all of it. So let's be specific. I would say that that's the news, which of course is fallible. There's multiple different sources that have different narratives and the news can be affected, especially if you have a really good um, PR department to spin the news for you. So it's not that facts affect these stocks values. What people choose to talk about on the news, specifically financial news is what affects these stock values. Uh, what else? But isn't it kind of like a cause and effect? Like since you know how everyone now is stuck at home, so Netflix's stock went up a lot because everyone's just on Netflix. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a push and pull. So the news affects stocks and then stock affects the news and then news affects stocks. So there is definitely a feedback loop between what goes on in the news and what goes on uh, in the stock market. Mm -hmm. What else affects stock value that you guys are aware of? I think it's important to appreciate that social media also affects stock value these days. And that's a special one that I wanna talk about because that is particularly dumb. Uh, the other thing that affects stock values that's worth considering is the act of speculation. So again, it's a really hard thing to model where the stock market's gonna go as we move into the future, simply because one can't actually predict the news. The other thing that's weird about the stock market is that everything about it has a feedback loop that causes it to affect itself, which is to say that people buying stocks, the act of purchasing a stock can cause the stock value to go up and people selling stocks, like people dumping a bunch of stock all at once can cause the value of that stock to go down. So the simple act of participating in the stock market itself is a driving force within the market. These are important things to keep in mind. Um, but I think my takeaway from it, the way that I think about it, is that this is truly gambling simply because the real answer is everything and nothing. Every possible thing you can imagine that affects the stock market is going to affect the stock market. And a bunch of stuff that should not affect the stock market directly affects the stock market. Here is my favorite example of why it is that it is possible for nothing to affect the stock market. Here's my favorite example, actually. Um, uh, who, somebody turned in an assignment yesterday that mentioned a company called Berkshire Hathaway? Yeah, that's me. Oh, word. So uh, could you tell us, homie, what's the current stock value for one share of Berkshire Hathaway? Okay, so uh, it's around like $290,000. Yeah, so Berkshire Hathaway is a really crazy stock, right? Um, a single share of it is worth almost a quarter million dollars. Yeah, sorry, to be exact, $283,600. Yeah, and today that one share, one share of it has lost $6,000 of value yep. in a single day, uh, yep. which is, sounds like a lot of money. It's not because it's only 2% of the stock value. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, Berkshire Hathaway is a, uh, a holding company, but the main thing that they do is real estate. And every now and then when I go house hunting in Pasadena, you'll see a house that's being sold by Berkshire Hathaway. They have a very fancy font to their logo, you know? Um, but due to the fact that social media affects stock values, because, uh, all sorts of fancy computer algorithms attempt to predict the values of stocks and people taking those algorithms seriously makes it so that those algorithms directly affect the value of stocks themselves. When the actress Anne Hathaway gets a new position, like gets a new uh, role in a movie and that begins to trend on Twitter, Twitter bots detect the fact that the word Hathaway is trending on Twitter and that directly affects the value of Berkshire Hathaway stock, even though those two things have nothing to do with each other.
you can literally use IMDB and Anne Hathaway's page to predict what the value of Berkshire Hathaway stock is going to do, even though those, those two things have nothing to do with each other. And that is due to the level of automation that is present these days in the stock market. Um, have you all seen the YouTube video, Humans Need Not Apply? No? No, I've never heard of it. It's one of the, it's a great video. Uh, it's five years old, which is really uh, shocking simply because of, um, it's shocking that it's five years old and it's still super relevant because, you know, we're moving towards the world described by this. But basically the video Humans Need Not Apply is about how um, humans are being driven out of the labor market by computers and machinery. And even though a bunch of like lower skilled jobs haven't been fully automated away yet, just because, you know, it's really complicated to make a robotic arm that flips burgers. It is important to appreciate that a bunch of jobs have already been automated away. One of the biggest ones being um, the act of being a stock trader. Uh, like, I'll just show the clip. And actually, I don't normally show videos on here. Can y'all hear the audio when I hit play? Does that play audio? No, no. Oh, heck, I guess I would, wait. No audio? No, I still can't hear anything. Okay, let me uh, try changing my mic to, uh, uh. Oh no, a technology problem that I don't know the answer to. Now I know what it feels like to be old. Oh wait, how about this? Audio? Technology has always gotten rid of... Yeah. Tight, okay. Yeah. Uh, check out this little clip of this video, just this one clip about the stock market, but then I'll post the whole thing on YouTube because uh, thinking about automation should also be one of the driving forces in how you think about investing your money low skilled jobs we don't want people doing anyway. They'll get more skilled and do better educated jobs like they've always done. Even ignoring the problem of pushing a hundred million additional people through higher education, white collar work is no safe haven either. If your job is sitting in front of a screen and typing and clicking, like maybe you're supposed to be doing right now, the bots are coming for you too, buddy. Software bots are both intangible and way faster and cheaper than physical robots. Given that white collar workers are, from a company's perspective, both more more expensive and more numerous, the incentive to automate their work is greater than low-skilled work. And that's just what automation engineers are for. These are skilled programmers whose entire job is to replace your job with a software bot. You may think even the world's smartest automation engineer could never make a bot to do your job, and you may be right, but the cutting edge of programming isn't super smart programmers writing bots, it's super smart programmers writing bots that teach themselves how to do things the programmer could never teach them to do. How that works is well beyond the scope of this video, but the bottom line is there are limited ways to show a bot a bunch of stuff to do, show the bot a bunch of correctly done stuff, and it can figure out how to do the job to be done. Even with just a goal and no knowledge of how to do it, the bots can still learn. Take the stock market, which in many ways is no longer a human endeavor. It's mostly bots that taught themselves to trade stocks, trading stocks with other bots that taught themselves. As a result, the floor of the New York Stock Exchange isn't filled with traders doing their day jobs anymore. It's largely a TV set. So bots have learned the market and bots have learned to write. If you've picked up a newspaper lately, you've probably already read a story written by a bot. There are I think it's really interesting the fact that the stock market is not a thing that we do anymore. Like there's no people on the floor of the stock market being like, hey, I'll trade you six holographic Charizards for a Berkshire Hathaway card or whatever, right? Um, it's mostly computer algorithms that trade automatically, trading with other computer algorithms that trade automatically. And the part where we have any input is actually really limited. It has also gotten to the point that if you have a server in the basement of the New York Stock Exchange, people pay millions of dollars of premium to have real estate simply so that your hard drive is slightly closer to the main server. Those hard drives doing the trading are connected by ethernet cables and the shorter the ethernet cable is that connects it to the primary trading server, 
the quicker those trades go through from the people making the requests. It's the craziest thing. It's super wild nonsense. Um, uh, so yep. I have a question about the the chart real quick. Yep. For after we copy the day one, so I filled all of the information out uh, like for what the stock values were for yesterday, and then after I copy it, do I change the uh, values and then the total values? No, you only change the value. The total value and the total value of your package is written out as an equation. So you shouldn't be calculating that by hand. The whole point is to have Excel do it for you. Okay, so what do I add other than yesterday's value and the daily change? After you set up your initial sheet, you clone it to today. The only thing that you edit in by hand is the value. Everything else is automatic. If I take this okay. and, and Tesla goes bankrupt and this goes to zero, notice that that automatically changes all of my other values, right? Changing yeah. this to zero changes the total value, changes the total investment, changes the daily change, changes the percent change. Okay. All, all of that is automatic. So this is equations, this is an equation, this is an equation, and this is an equation. The only thing that you need to update day to day is the value of the stock when you look it up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I got a couple more things about stocks just to let y'all know, and then I'll open the floor to just like general questions because yo, this is a lot of information. And it is messy and difficult to understand just because that's the way that it is like in the real world. Um, <clears throat> uh, additional things. Uh, you should all know that income from stocks is taxed differently than normal income. Just a big heads up. Um, at the end of the fiscal year, when you do your taxes for April 15th or this year, because of the coronavirus, the tax deadline got kicked out till June. Um, normally, if you're just like a working person, you get a small tax return after you file your taxes in April. The deal with getting a tax return is the fact that if you work for a business, right, like at AGBU, Wendy takes some amount of money from out of our paychecks and sets it aside in a separate account, right? That's called your withholding. And then in April, you pay your taxes and the government is like, okay, cool. So based on the money you made, you owe us this much money. And that difference, right? The leftover money that gets refunded to you as a tax return. It's not that you are getting money from the government. It's that that money came out of your paycheck so that you could pay your income tax at the end of the year. And well-run businesses will always set aside extra money so that at the end of the year, you get back a little bit of money to spend in April. When you do your taxes, you have to report the income that you made from investments. And because that stuff is not taxed the same as uh, regular income from working a real person's job, you may end up having to pay taxes on that stuff at the end of the year. So occasionally you will find that when you file your taxes and you have money in the stock market, the taxes that you have to pay on your income from investments will come out of your tax refund. Just a warning. Is that okay? Okay. And just so y'all know, if you have a lot of money to invest, like serious big amounts of money to invest, you can hire a firm to invest it for you. That's what um, a stock broker is, right? Uh, and there's a bunch of different stock brokerage firms that you can go to, uh, like TD Ameritrade or any of the big ones who I don't want to like give an advertising for. But y'all should know that nowadays, um, stock brokers, much like a lot of other jobs that have been made obsolete by technology and software, in a lot of ways, if you are willing to take the risk on yourself, stock brokers are becoming obsolete simply because you can invest your money directly into the market. 
Uh, now, I'm only going to say this, and it's not because this is not an advertisement. What I'm about to say is not an advertisement. Like, I am not endorsing either of these products. Uh, I'm only going to talk about these two products because they are tools, and that's how you should think of them, right? Like, hey, you should have a ruler. I'm not trying to plug the company Statler, but Statler just happened to make this ruler, which is a very useful tool. In the same way, there are two apps that are people are commonly using for investing right now, only so that you don't have to pay brokerage fees. Normally, if you have a stockbroker and you're like, hey, yo, dog, I need you to sell all of my shares of Tesla, please, that will have a fee associated with it that you have to pay out of pocket so that the trade will go through. However, if you don't want to pay those fees, there are two apps right now that are really common that allow y'all to invest money in the stock market directly yourself. Uh, what are those two apps? Do y'all know? No idea. Is it Robin Hood and Robin uh, Hood and something else? Corn? Those are Robin Hood and two. Fidelity? Uh, Fidelity is a major stock brokerage, so if they do have an app that is communicating with a real human um, trader who trades on your behalf, and I would assume it has fees. Uh, these two apps, Robinhood and Acorns, are the two big ones that don't have fees until you start getting into big money. Like once you start making six-figure trades, then there are fees associated with trades of that size and significant taxes associated with trades of that size. But if you are below a certain size limit, these are basically free to use. Uh, Robinhood works exactly how you think it does. It allows you to put money in and out of the stock market willy-nilly. Um, and Acorns does too, but it's a weirder one. What it does is it, like, let's say you go, um, that the screenshot that I showed you of the guy who lost all of his money, the dude who lost $120,000 because he invested poorly, that was a screenshot from the app Robinhood. What Acorns does is it rounds up all of your credit card purchases and it automatically invests that. So like, let's say you go to Starbucks, right? And you get a $5 coffee. I'm sorry. Let's say you go to Starbucks and you get a $4.75 coffee. If you have an Acorn account, what it's going to do is it's going to charge your credit card $5 instead. It's going to charge only round amounts and it'll automatically invest the difference. That 25 cents goes directly into uh, your investment portfolio so that it gradually builds your investment portfolio bit by bit, a little bit at a time by skimming a little bit of money out of your bank account. The goal is that that amount of money is so small that you don't really notice. And then you log into your Acorn account at some point and you're like, oh, I've made some money. That's cool, I guess. Um, not an advertisement for these apps, but if you are going to do investing of this nature, you might as well do it for yourself. Um, oh, right. Last two things. Two important things to know about stocks, things that can occur. Um, <clears throat> there are stock events. And the two stock events that are probably worth knowing about are stock splits. and uh, stock buybacks. Um, has, have any of y'all heard of these possible events? Yes, no. Okay. Uh, a stock split happens uh, when the value of your stock is cut in half, but it doubles the amount of stocks that you have. So if, uh, let's say we have a fictional company, um, HDX, and I bet this is a real company. I, I don't know. I bet any combination of three or four letters is already taken. This is just for example, right? Let's say that you have 20 shares of HDX, and these are currently valued at um, $30, right? Uh, that means that you have how much value in this company? If you had 20 shares worth $30 each, how much value do you have in the company? 
So this is $600 of value. Occasionally, a company will go through an event called a stock split. And what would happen to your stake in the company is that instead of your shares being 20 at $30, you would look at your account and the next day you would have 40 shares at $15. How much value do you have in the company? It's the same, 600. It's, it's exactly the same. So notice that when a stock splits, right, it doesn't change your value. It's typically the same value as it was before, same value in total. It's just that you can now sell off a smaller amount of your stocks that you would have been able to otherwise. So here, if I sold 10 stocks, right, it would sell off half of my value. Here, you could sell off 11 stocks. I'm sorry, here you could sell off 11 stocks, right? And that would allow you to sell a fractional amount of your share in the company that you couldn't do when you had 20 shares. Because if you sold off 11 shares here, that would be the equivalent of selling off, uh, five and a half shares of the stock when it was valued here, and you can't sell off a fraction of a stock. So if you ever look at your stuff and you're like, oh my God, this value has dropped in half, check to see how many shares you have, because if the number of shares doubled, that's fine. You didn't lose any money. It's just that the stocks got smaller, but you got more of them. Uh, is that okay? Okay. Yep. And then the second thing that you should be aware of is that stocks can also be bought back. This is when a company <clears throat> uses cash on hand in order to reabsorb the value of stocks. So another thing that can happen is you might have, uh, you might be looking at your investment accounts, right? And one day you'll have some amount of a company that's just, uh, let's say it's this, and we have 30 shares uh, at $40, right? Uh, and in the same account, you look at your cash on hand and your cash is $0, right? Which isn't saying you have no money, it's just saying that you don't have any liquid money all of your money is tied up in the stock market. It's all invested in different things. The next day you might check your account. And when it comes to AAA, you might be down to five shares <clears throat> at $50. And you're like, what happened to my 25 shares? How did I lose 25 shares of AAA? But then you'll check your cash on hand, right? And you look at your cash and your cash will now be, uh, $1,250. So what happened? Well, the company, whatever company this is, AAA, they had a stock buyback. They purchased 25 of your shares. And instead of giving you $40 for them, when stock buybacks occur, they typically happen at above market rates. So the company bought back 25 of their 30 shares from you. They cashed you out at $50 each, but now the stocks that you have left over, uh, the act of doing stock buyback typically increases share values. Uh, are there any open-ended questions out there about stocks, investing in the stock market, any stuff like this in general? Just because when we talk tomorrow, we'll be talking about something totally different. I have a question about the homework assignment today. Yeah. So we turn in the 500 word write up and the Excel sheet or just the write up? Both. I'd like the 500 word Both. write up okay. and, and then share the Excel sheet with me. That's probably the best way to do it just so that it'll update live as you add your pages over the next few weeks. How can I do that with Excel? Uh, oh, you can't. So just upload your version that you have of it now. And then at the end, uh, when you turn in your new version, you'll just have to turn in a new version. All right. Yep. Uh, any other questions out there about um, stocks, investing, the stock market?
No. Um, well, just uh, a thing to keep in mind. Um, if you do have money to invest right now is probably not a time to buy. And that's, you know, I think pretty obvious why that would be with everybody being stuck at home, coronavirus, and buy goods, production is down, all that bad stuff. Uh, but once the market bottoms out, um, which is an impossible thing to guess when that will occur, what that will look like, like when things are worse and most dire, those are the types of times that you want to put money into the market so that as those stocks recover back to their normal values, and in some cases exceed those normal values, that's where there is money to be made. Um, it is all gambling. There's really no way around that. But if done correctly with strategy and luck and done intelligently over the long term, it's one of the most secure ways to grow your wealth. Um, when we come in tomorrow, uh, and like I said, every day we'll be updating this stuff. So if you ever have questions based on what you're reading online about these stocks and these investments, y'all can always hit me with questions then. And if I can't answer them, you know, I'll look it up and figure out an answer. When we come in tomorrow, we're going to talk about basic personal finance. So how should you think about how to spend your own money? Because if you have some amount of income, right, and you're spending all of it on your personal finance situation, you have no extra money to invest into the stock market, which is not a good situation to be in. It's a situation that more and more people are finding themselves in every day. So there are two ways that you can fix that problem. Get a higher paying job so that you have more income or decrease your personal costs so that your income is greater than your personal costs. And that's another way that you can make it so that you have some leftover money to invest and try to grow. So when we come in tomorrow, we'll be doing another tiny Excel sheet project where we're gonna figure out what your guys' um, personal finance situation looks like starting next year when you go to college, because it's important to keep that stuff in mind. And it's important to plan for the future so that if you know that you're gonna have a gap in your budget, you can try and figure out a way to plug it up now. Uh, are there any questions on that stuff or what we're gonna be talking about through the end of the week? Yeah, I got a quick question. Yep. Um, so you know how today we updated our stocks, right? Yep. Every day, are you going to be posting a new, um, a new Google Classroom assignment for us to like put in the updated version? No, you're going to keep track of your stocks over a period of time. And then I'll collect an updated version of it probably in about two weeks. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But can't uh, you already see the updated version? Cause it's on the same Google sheet. It's just a different page. If you're doing it in Google Sheets, then yes, I can see it update live. If you're doing it Excel, then no, you'll have to turn it in for me to check it again. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a lot of like speculation going on right now with a lot of biological companies, um, simply because people figure that whatever the company is that figures out a good testing scheme for coronavirus or the first company that figures out a vaccine and then can patent it and put it into mass production, that stock will probably explode overnight. But whenever there is a rush like this, you will always see a million different articles talking about a million different companies all working towards the same thing. Never take that information as being like sacred or guaranteed or whatever. Um, a lot of that stuff is just a scam. Though, you, you know, if you do find something that looks promising, especially since this is just a high school project and not you actually investing your real $10,000, consider doing it for the sake of the project. It might be interesting to get a couple of those companies' names down just to uh, track what they do over time. Uh, there's also this one that, man, my brother-in-law keeps trying to get me to invest in because they say that they are on the way to having a vaccine for the flu which would be huge if that was true. Again, that would probably like blow that stock value up overnight. But again, man, it's just, it's not, none of this is ever guaranteed. You can pay attention to the news the best you can, but no matter what, it's still a guess, it's still gambling. Uh, anyway, if there are no extra questions, we'll call it here. And then when we come in tomorrow, we'll talk about how to do your own personal finance and we'll set up an Excel sheet uh, that lists out all of our 
um, costs from month to month because I guarantee if you go into college without some similar scheme set up, you will find yourself short at the end of the month and there is nothing worse than having no food and trying to figure out what to do up until payday. When we come back tomorrow, we'll talk about personal finance and how it is we can make room in our budgets so that we have extra money left over to invest. Um, Mr. Rob? Yep. So real quick, can I um, like screen share or something to show you the part that I, I'm not understanding? What are you What are you talking about? For the thing, the chart. The Excel sheet? Yeah. What is the problem? Okay, so you know how yesterday when you did like you did D2 times uh, C2 in order to get the values and then those added all up automatically. So you can get the values to change automatically when you change them daily. Um, so in terms of the equations, uh, all of these four are typed in and then the total value is an equation. That is to say that it's this cell times this cell. It's the value yeah. times the number of shares. And then for the total investment, that's equal to sum. Okay. Uh, I have I have that. It's just like when I go for or go on to the day two to get yesterday's value, is that just the original total investment? Yes. Okay. Thank and you. that you can't copy paste because when you copy paste stuff in an Excel sheet, like if I take this number and I hit control C and then control V, it doesn't copy paste the number, it copy paste the equation. So when you type in yesterday's value, you'll actually have to type the digits in. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. It's a good question. Um, are there any other questions out there? Really nothing? Y'all sounded real excited when we were picking out all of, like, before we did the final, when we were picking out what stuff we would talk about after the final, y'all seemed real excited to talk about stocks and investing. I, I'm sorry, did you find out it's actually boring and confusing? Because that was what I learned about investing when I tried to teach myself about how the stock market works. I learned that, um, oh, there's not really an answer. It's just a, Mr. Rob. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, what's the uh, formula for the percent change? Uh, it should be equal to the daily change divided by the total investment, and then you multiply that by 100. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let me go back to the example spreadsheet. So that equation looks like um, this. It's the daily change divided by the total investment cell, then multiplied by 100. And uh, if you lost money, then the percent change will be negative for the day. Which, like I said, like, don't think about that as being necessarily a bad thing. Stocks go up and down all the time. Just because you lose some fractional percent one day doesn't mean you should sell your entire portfolio. Uh, it might. It might mean that you should sell before things get worse if you have a reason to think that. Or it could just be a daily fluctuation that will recover if you wait long enough. Uh, there's no way to know. It's just, you know, rolling dice, reading the news, reading Twitter, trying to take that into account, and then rolling dice. Um, anyway, when we come in tomorrow, we will talk about um, smart ways to do a personal finance. Uh, we'll set up an Excel sheet that does that, uh, and we will all be in a better position financially. Y'all have a very nice day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Rob. You too. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Rob. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye, Mr. Rob. Peace.